Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so, hey, everyone, thanks so much for joining. Um, my name is Demay Biagbuna. I'm one of the co-founders of Chezzy. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with us, we are a software that helps you to optimize the impact of your employee resource groups um, by streamlining your administrative processes um, and helping you track back the ROI of your groups on business outcomes. Um, if you want to talk more about our software, I'm more than happy to schedule some time with you. But for today, I'm really excited for this session. Um, we're joined by Tanisha Craig James. She is the equitable design lead um, of community and hiring at CultureAmp. And we're going to be talking about how you all can leverage your engagement uh, survey data to help inform your ERG strategy. So that's something I get asked a lot in like my day-to-day -day conversations with DEI practitioners. So super excited uh, to have Tanisha here to kind of go through what she's seeing in the space, especially working at CultureAmp. They're doing some really creative stuff when it comes to surveying. So excited to get your take on the topic. Um, so without further ado, I will pass it on to you. Um, just as a quick note for everyone, we will do a Q&A at the end of the session. So feel free to drop questions in the chat and we will get to it by the end of the session. All right. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Um, I will do a proper introduction in just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and set myself up for success and say something that some of you probably have not heard for the first time today, which is let me share my screen really quickly. I think we've got the right one. Move some things around. All right, cool. So we are gonna talk about harnessing employee insights, leveraging your engagement surveys to empower your ERGs and shape their strategies. Before I get started, something that we do internally at Coltramp is a land acknowledgement. So I want to take some time to acknowledge the land that I am on, which is the land originally settled and occupied by the Ohlone. I recognize the culture, strength, resilience, and capacity of the people in this land. I pay my respects to their elders past and present. I am a descendant of people who were taken from their homes in Africa and brought into the Americas and the Caribbean. I'm here representing a people who built a rich culture out of dark times, a culture that is interwoven into the fabric of America that shapes the rhythm of this nation. I also pay my respects to those ancestors who endured and survived the transatlantic slave trade. I recognize that their spirit lives on and creates the deep connection of black people across the African diaspora. Okay, proper introduction for myself. Uh, my name is Tanisha Craig James. Uh, my pronouns are she and her. My role at Coltramp is the global EDI lead of community and hiring. Try saying that five times fast. Uh, really what that means is that I have the privilege of leading our ERG program. And then the other part of my role is managing our equitable hiring processes for our talent, talent acquisition team. So a little bit about me. Um, I am a big sister. Uh, my mom will never admit to this, but I'm also the favorite daughter. And I'm a wife. I'm a dog mom to two small little pups. Their names are Rogue and DC. We are very big comic fans in our house. Uh, I'm based in Berkeley, California, so I'm just right outside of San Francisco. My toxic trait is not checking the chat when I'm sharing my screen. So if you're saying things in the chat, I'm sorry if I don't catch them all. Um, and something that we do at Culture Amp whenever we have in-person events, and sometimes we do this for virtual events, is ask everyone to select their belonging badges, which are little pins that they can pop onto their shirts. And the really great introductions, conversation starter, and they let you share what you want to share about yourself as you're starting to meet and mingle with new people and do that thing that we all love to do, networking. Um, so a couple of my belonging badges that I am wearing today are that I am anxious, I am an introvert, and I'm also an optimist. So what are we talking about today? Um, four big things. One is just talking about employee engagement. So we'll go through just the basics of employee engagement, kind of set a baseline for all of us to get grounded in and get the conversation started. Um, then we'll go over just getting grounded, settle, settling in and analyzing the data. Third piece will be about building your strategy. And then the last piece and the most fun is socializing that strategy and starting to take action. So we're going to lead into my toxic trait. I'm going to ask everyone to share something in the chat. Um, I'm sure we're all coming into the conversation with different levels of exposure and experience with employee engagement. So I just want to hear from everybody that's in the group. Just what does employee engagement mean to you? Give like 30, 45 seconds to drop some thoughts. Active participation. Okay. 
people do their best work while living their best life. Love that. Commitment, communicating, so important, especially in a virtual world. Involvement and enthusiasm in work and the workplace. Comfortability, employees are thriving and growing in the org. How comfortable employees are. Caring about others. Values alignment. Connection and trust, such good ones. Cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna pause there. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Don't stop, keep the conversation going. Um, so just to get us kind of all on the same page, I'm gonna leverage the definition that we use at CultureAmp for what employee engagement is. The way that we see it is that it's a representation of the levels of enthusiasm and connection employees have with their organization. It's a measure of how motivated people are to put in extra effort for their organization and a sign of how committed they are to staying there. So something to keep in mind when we're thinking about engagement is that it's not something that you can act on specifically. What it is is an outcome of an organization's actions and overall employee experience, or in this case for our conversation, the experience of your ERG members. So if we think about my level of engagement at CultureAmp, for example, it is really just an outcome of how CultureAmp is showing up for me and listening to the things that I have to say and how I, how connected and committed I am to staying with CultureAmp. So what does having this data available to you mean for your ERGs? Um, at their core, we know that ERGs create a sense of belonging for members who are often marginalized in the workplace. They help foster inclusivity and build community. They can also provide personal and professional support to all of their members. Having engagement surveys in place, whether they are specifically designed for your ERGs or if they're being run company-wide, um, help allow a couple of really good benefits. One is understanding how your marginalized employees are feeling about the company, their work, as well as the group that they're a part of. You can take action on the highest priority areas of improvement. It's an opportunity to just show your ERG members that you're listening and you care about them. You can leverage the data to help strengthen the culture and connection within your ERG groups. And you can also use those results to help improve the experiences, belonging, and inclusion of your members. This is by no means an exhaustive list of benefits of running surveys. This is just a couple of things that I had to jot down on a slide. So getting your hands on the data, like I said earlier, um, we're all coming into the conversation with different levels of exposure and experience with measuring employee engagement. And I promise you that no matter where you are in your journey, there is some way to collect some data to help get you started. So if you are at an org that already has surveys in place, um, definitely recommend working with your admins to run reports or help filter out the data specifically for the demographics that you need for your ERG. If you don't have anything in place, Google Forms are free, so you can run your own survey with a Google Form. Um, and finally, if you're somewhere that's kind of caught in the middle, think about what data you do have access to or that you can get your hands on and what is, what's the data that you're missing to help fill in some of the gaps. So even though I work at CultureAmp and what we do is run employee engagement surveys, I think there's always still some gaps specifically for our ERG groups that are really specific to each individual group. So we still leverage Google Forms relatively frequently to collect some additional uh, qualitative data from the members to better understand their broader experience. I will drop a couple of resources from CultureAmp in the chat. Um, one is, oh, I can't drop them right now. I will drop them later, but I will share a resource that's 22 employee engagement survey questions that you can leverage. And then the other is what demographic questions should you ask for in surveys? So I will make sure I share those towards the end and get those out in the chat. All right, so now the data is there, we're ready to analyze it. But before you do that, take a second and think about what's in your 100% responsibility versus what's not. Um, so this is something, I, an exercise that I like to do with our ERG leads internally is identifying what they own versus what may fall into the scope or the responsibility of another person or team. Uh, there's a framework from the conscious leadership group that we use, and I can also share that video a little bit later in the chat as well for everyone to reference. It's a great four minute video, and it's a really good grounding exercise to think about 100% responsibility. 
So with 100% responsibility, one of the things that our ERG leads are responsible for are collecting and analyzing the data. But with that, they can, they should be or could be collecting additional feedback, which kind of ties back to us running those Google form surveys, but they do not need to examine individual or team data. They don't get paid for that. It's not their job. They should only be thinking about their community and collecting additional feedback for their community to better inform their plans which takes us to the next piece of their responsibility, which is formulating and presenting those plans. So the ask of them and the thing that they own is meeting, brainstorming, and designing plans to meet the needs and aspirations of their community. But what they don't have to do is develop plans relating to company-level programs or processes. Again, they're not getting paid enough to do that. And then that last piece that they own um, in regards to building their strategy is escalating strategic concerns. So if something starts bubbling up, there's a red flag, they're getting um, feedback from within their communities that is concerning, the ask for them is to provide actionable specific feedback to our EDI teams, our people experience, or our leadership teams. They are not responsible for resolving those individual or company level issues. All right, so now they've got, now you've got your hands on the data. You've grounded yourself in your responsibilities. Let's unpack things a little bit. So once you've got your data, first step is to sit back, review the overall score. And based on this score, whether you got 50 out of 100 or 80 out of 100, if you took no action, question ask yourself, what would happen? Next is looking at what you're doing well. And I can't emphasize this enough. We tend to jump right into the things that we're doing incorrectly or where the opportunities are. Take a second, celebrate your wins, root yourself on, what are you doing great? And celebrate that, acknowledge it, and think about like how you can continue to keep that going. And then jump into where the opportunities are and identify what's not going so well. And then regardless of where those highs and lows are, identifying what the top drivers are engagement are will help inform your strategy and what you need to continue building for your ERG. So really listening to what your members are saying, what's important to them. And then that last piece is just taking all of that information and identifying one to two focus areas. And this is where you really wanna to start to nail down, like what are the things that you can impact versus the things that you can influence as you're building your strategy. So let's build it. Um, so first off, why are we doing this? Uh, if you really knew me, you would know that I came from a training background. And if you don't tell me why I have to do something, there is a high probability that I just won't do it or I will do it my way. So for all of my program leads or for ERG leaders who are trying to get others excited about building a strategy, this slide is for you. Um, one thing that's really important in grounding in the why is that this is a development opportunity. Having your ERG leads build a strategy is a form of development. As they start to grow in their careers and achieve higher levels of leadership, building a strategy and socializing it will be a key part of their role, no matter what direction they decide to go in. The other piece is commerce. So um, the better our ERG groups are, are able to articulate and socialize and share the work that they're doing and how it has company impact, the more likely they are to be consulted on decisions and potentially receive additional resources, i.e. money. Uh, creating a strategy is one of the first steps they, um, they take in quantifying all of the work that they're doing. And then that last piece is just around clarity. At the end of the day, your ERGs need a map to help get them from their destination, to help them get to their destination, and a strategy is what's going to help serve that purpose. This will be the thing that holds everyone accountable to delivering on the goals that you've set for your community. It also will help serve as a home base to come back to because we all know that competing priorities are going to come up, and this is the thing that you'll refer back to to see how those priorities or co competing priorities, excuse me, will align or don't align to what you're trying to, to achieve. So your ERGs can use this to help decide if taking, um, taking on something new will take them off course or if it will actually get them closer to what those initial goals are. Um, once you've got your data, you are grounded in what your responsibilities are, you know why you're doing this, let's start building things and create some objectives. So when you've, uh, based off the data you've collected, think about what the top priorities are for your community. I recommend having one to two, really just no more than three, because you want them to have some stretch, but still be accomplishable. 
Again, I'm going to say this probably a zillion times, truly identify what you can influence versus impact. So an example of this is if you're looking at your data and it's telling you that your ERG members are looking for more career opportunities, um, you really want to think about how much your ERG can truly move the needle on career opportunities. So excuse me, your ERG can create more career-focused programming, but they may not have any control over how opportunities are identified or offered within the organization. So if they're looking at that as an objective, is it something that they can influence or is it something that they can actually have impact on? Another thing to think about when creating your objectives are, um, are there certain things that are more aligned to company initiatives? Is there an opportunity to ladder up some of the ERG initiatives to the company strategy, if that's your goal? Because at the end of the day, your community members are your highest priority and your ERG objectives should really add up to the impact you want to have to enhance the experience of your community. Uh, these are a couple of tools that we use internally to help flush out the objectives. So feel free to leverage this for some brainstorming and start to get the creative juices flowing. Um, the tool that I still use to this day is the link down, link up. You can flip this little triangle around in whichever way makes the most sense. Um, so you can begin with the end in mind, which in this case could be your ERG mission. Or if you're feeling really crazy, as I mentioned before, you could link this up to like a company strategy or company mission as well. So then you want to take that big, huge piece of work and start to filter it down into um, smaller actions or tasks that will actually link you down to the objective. Uh, again, I found that this works really well for me because I tend to operate in one of two modes. One is like really big, huge, aspirational, lofty goals, or the other is really like task oriented and getting the thing done. But then I end up doing with so many tasks that I don't know what it's actually linking to. So leveraging this tool to help brainstorm and put some put pen to paper and get the juices flowing is really helpful for me. Um, the other approach is the three lenses approach. So this is a way to step back and thinking about how one really big problem is impacting three different areas with, within the organization. So you want to think about the experience of your ERG member as an individual. And then from that ERG member, it steps out to your community. And then from your community to the broader company culture. So if we think about that example that I used earlier with um, have, having career opportunities, how does not having enough career opportunities impact your ERG member? How would it then impact your ERG community? And then how does it then impact the company culture or, or the broader company overall? And then questions to keep in mind is when there is a recurring problem, what other lenses are could you be looking through? So is there anything else that extends beyond just your ERG, your, your community? Is there another ERG community that it's likely being impacted that you can partner with and start to come up with shared goals and experiences to start to build a strategy around that? Most importantly, make it measurable. So whatever your ERG's objectives are, they should be measurable. This is key on just being accountable to delivering on your actions. And so I'll share that in the next few slides of like what it actually looks like to take action. This is um, a slide from one of our ERG's within CultureAmp, uh, WOCA, which stands for Women of CultureAmp. Um, I pulled two other slides from their strategy that they presented back in June for the second half of the year. Um, so this first slide is their look back for the first six months of the year and the share of what they did and what they accomplished. So you can see um, um, as we edge into from that tealish color into that first like top piece of um, the, the white background, their one of their objectives was to build an active community, both virtually and in person. Simple enough. Um, but then you can see right below that the actions that they took that ladder back up to that objective. Um, so between February and June, starting in February, they ran an additional survey in addition to our culture ramp um, camper check-in that we ran. And then they had a couple of different events in March for International Women's Day. There was a Map Your Network workshops, and we ran some mentor panels. 
And then in May and June, they had another panel managing your career as a, as a mother. And then in June, they started to launch lean in circles internally. And as you move over there towards the right hand of the side slide, you can see what their goals were, um, what they actually did in terms of meeting those goals, and then what they considered their measure of success or actually or what done actually could mean for them. So they were looking for more participation in, they were looking for participation in their survey. They wanted to get 65% of their members to participate. They got 28%, with, which actually, even though it's in the red, it's a massive win for them, considering that just a little over 50% of our employees are women. Uh, so they make up 50% of their ERG. So getting 30% of, of that group was a little less than 30% is still a really big win for them. Um, they wanted to increase the active and organic conversations in their channel per, qu per quarter. Um, so you can see that they had a big win there in the first half of the year. Uh, their clicks on their Confluence page, where they had uh, all of their information housing, um, information for International Women's Day and Women's History Month. They were looking for a specific number of attendants during the International Women's Day events. And then they were also looking for a specific number for attendance for the connection event that they ran for managing your career as a mother panel. So taking that look back from first half of the year when they built their strategy for the second half of the year, the objective didn't change, that stayed exactly the same, but they put some new actions in place for the back half of our last six months of the year. They've built some new goals and they'll be sharing the actuals um, and updating these numbers throughout the back half of the year and sharing this back with their communities. So for July, they've got their lean in circles. They actually have launched, they've gone live. Um, for August, they're going to have a social impact day to bring folks together um, for social impact. Uh, they'll do a midpoint lean in circle check in. They're going to have a guest speaker coming in the fall, and then they'll start planning for International Women's Day in 2025 come November. So again, they've got those goals for the number of folks they would like to participate in a lot of those initiatives, and then they're going to continue to measure their organic conversations as well. And that last one where it says uh, increase, I feel like I belong at Culture Amp, which is currently at 69%. They want to see if they can increase that number by about four points. So that is something that they can have influence over, but maybe not direct impact, because that is a company-wide survey question that we ask internally. Um, and we can't always make changes at a company level, but they know that it is something that they can likely influence based off of the programming and initiatives that they built for the back half of the year. All right, so socializing and taking action, the most important part. You have done all of the work and you need to shout it out from the rooftops. So at Coltramp, we like to align our strategy sessions to fall around the same time that our execs socialize their company strategy. Um, so our execs will socialize company strategy twice a year. I ask that our ERGs do it just once a year because it is a very loftly pro project for them to undertake. And then I also ask for them to provide updates to their communities on a monthly basis. So a couple of suggestions on how, based all around how we approach it is, um, one, host a session for your ERG to receive feedback from peers and leaders. So we do a session internally, specifically focused for ERG leaders to meet with their other leads, to meet with exec sponsors, um, as well as our advisors. They run a whole session where they walk everyone through their strategies, they get real-time feedback, and they make tweaks and adjustments um, based off of the feedback that they get. Another thing that I suggest is get their managers involved. There's always an opportunity to link the work that your ERG leads are doing to the work that they're actually doing in their day-to-day -day role. And sometimes those two pieces don't connect. So making sure their managers have some level of visibility and can also help provide some feedback on how those strategies are being built and developed can be really influential into how they take those skills that they're developing into their day-to-day uh, -day role. Uh, then share the strategies with your community. This can be done via a special session that they decide to schedule. Um, they can do, if there's already connection events that are scheduled or time that's scheduled, don't break the wheel. Just like use that same time that's already on the books. Um, also, we are time poor most days. So record a video or share a one pager, however you want to do it or whatever makes the most sense. Like sharing the work that you're doing with your community is the most important because no one gets to see it if it's locked away in a closet. 
And then after that, uh, keep sharing updates. So keeping the community updated on how things are progressing, what's working, what's not working. Um, our execs have no problem saying like, hey, we missed that goal. So we're going to change it. So your ERG should be able to lean into that same kind of energy because they are the execs for their, their communities at the end of the day. And that's it. I feel like I've talked a lot. So just to wrap up, uh, step one, start with a survey to better understand what your community wants, what you're doing well, and where there are opportunities. Um, next, take your time when analyzing the data. Only take on what falls within your 100% responsibility. And then based on that data, come up with no more than about three objectives, the actions that will get you there, and the results you want to measure. And most importantly, share your story. I think we can head into question time. Yay. Thank you so much. Uh, this was super great. And I'm seeing a lot of great chatter and engagement in the chat. So I'm going to try and sift through uh, the chat first for questions, and then we'll move into the Q&A. Um, Natalie had a question around what is a what is a lean in circle? Um, you can actually look this up on the web. Lean in circles are an opportunity to bring women together specifically is what they were started for. It's kind of like a little leadership like cohort to bring folks together, talk about specific topics. It's almost like a little peer to peer coaching. And there's plenty of tools. I think it's like leanin.org that you can go to. Plenty of tools that you can go to. One of the girls who's in um, our WOCA ERG, she's actually certified to host and facilitate them. So if we've leveraged her her knowledge to help build lean in circles for WOCA internally for us. Yeah, and Bia just put in the chat, it is based off of Cheryl Sandberg's yeah. book, Lead In, right? Yeah. Um, okay, there's another question. Uh, when do you do, or sorry, when do ERGs do their planning sessions and are they planning out the entire year? So do you have any best practices for those planning sessions and what goes into that? Yeah, so we do it once a year. So um, the way that we do it internally at Cold Tramp, just from a company-wide level, is that our execs will socialize the company strategy at the end of this year for 2025 and then do a mid-year kind of like re-socialization in June. So I align the timing to fall in line with that June time period for us. So Execs will do theirs in June and then we'll run our sessions in July. So the year I'll do a couple of um, initial enablement sessions for the ERGs, like one, like what it looks like to go through our camper check-in data, what it looks like to look at that data from an ERG lens. And then I run another session with them uh, where I walk them through a full on like template of like how to actually build your strategy. I actually use a lot of the same things that I shared within this group of like how to think about like building your objectives out, like starting really big and getting really small measuring out like what those key results will look like, making sure that things are act, act, or actionable, I'm sorry, are measurable, what you can impact versus influence, things of that nature. We do an hour long deep dive into that. And then they have about a month to come together, brainstorm, build everything out, socialize it with their exec sponsors, advisors, get feedback. Um, then we do the bigger session where they'll hope we'll hold the session for peers, exec sponsors, advisors for them to get that real time feedback. And then within the next like couple of weeks, my ass is for them to re-socialize that within their communities. So it would either be, like I said, a one pager, a video, they can do a live session and do a big, like, you know, we're launching our, we're launching our strategy, like a big, big thing. If they want to, it's really up to them, like capacity and like what makes the most sense for their community. Um, and they ask to just like provide like monthly updates after you, you've shared that out. So all in all, it takes about a month and a half to two months. Awesome. Um, I think that's all the questions that were in the chat. So moving on to the Q and A and everyone feel free to continue to drop them in here. Um, there is a quick question around if this is going to be shared out in terms of recording. Yes, this is being recorded and will be shared out, um, later today or tomorrow. So you all will get this amazing, um, webinar and you can feel free to share that out with people. Um, next question is, do you find it challenging to keep ERG leads engaged? How are you compensating them or incentivizing them for being volunteers outside of their day-to-day -day roles? Um, me personally, no, I recognize that I sit in a place of privilege. I have some amazing ERG leads, um, but it's, it's taken time to put together a program to keep them active and engaged. Um, they are compensated. We have a three pillar compensation structure at Coltramp. 
Um, one of the pillars is access. So they get a special type of access to uh, our execs and VPs. Um, they set up, we set up quarterly uh, ask me anything sessions where it's just the ERG leads and those VPs. They also have, like I said, that special session with them where they're getting the real time feedback from them on their strategies um, and other connection points that I can help make and facilitate throughout the year, whatever makes sense. Um, the other piece is around development. So our ERG leads do have special access to developmental opportunities that others within the organization don't have access to. Um, so this year we are partnering with, with a couple of external partners who are going to come in and provide some L&D opportunities and workshops for our ERG leads. Um, if you are short on budget, which we were, you know, just a couple of years ago, um, see who you've got for mates rates. We actually had some really great customers that we partnered with who came in and facilitated some sessions for our ERG leads, and they wanted nothing other than to just share their expertise. Um, we also leverage our, our exec sponsors and like our VPs and their networks and kind of tapped into their networks to see like who could they bring in to help facilitate some like free sessions or just like career conversations or whatnot. So um, that everything has to cost money. And then the last piece is that we do do cash compensation. So um, I think our uh, we have a tiered structure. We have an ERG board chair who oversees the boards, and then we have um, our ERG board leads. So the board chairs, I believe, are compensated six thousand um, a year, and the leads are three thousand a year, and that's broken up annually across their paychecks. Awesome. Um, question from Nicole, do you have strategies for getting more people to complete the surveys? I think that's probably a big <laughs> um, hurdle or obstacle for a lot of folks. It's just like actually getting people to take the time to do it. Yes. And been there hundred percent. And I'm actually going to give Macy o. Owens her flowers because this is something that I, um, that she shared with me is um, doing the, sending your, having your ERG board leads. Everyone take a list of 10 to 20 people and just start DMing people. And once you get that DM, someone's like, oh, you thought of me? Okay, yeah, I'll fill out this survey versus when you send it out kind of into that broader atmosphere where everyone sees it and it's like, oh, I'll do that later or oh, somebody else will do it or and it, or you, your Slack notifications are turned off. But once you start DMing people, you are, we have seen such a higher increase, one in like survey participation, um, but also when we have events too, like our ERGs have been doing it like, a week before an event, the day of an event, an hour before an event for like anyone who has an RSVP'd and then they've actually seen an increase in their event participation too. So um, just start DMing people, just let them know. Like, I see you, I know you're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, question from Stephanie. I am currently overseeing the ERGs at change.org and we are fully remote global company. Can you talk about how you get engagement and engagement data, I'm guessing, outside of North America, specifically the U.S.? Um, again, I said in a place of privilege. So we do run our own engagement surveys and they are run globally. I don't know if there's anything, is there a barrier that's making it difficult to, difficult or impossible? Because sometimes there are structures or processes in place that you may not be able to collect global data. So I might need some more context for that one. I'll see if she puts it in the chat. Okay. <laughs> um, another question in our Q&A, and Stephanie, feel free to clarify that question in the chat. Um, another question in the Q&A, how do you get leaders to complete these tasks when they have their day jobs to be concerned with? I guess you've already talked about like compensation, so that's <laughs> an incentive inherently, but if there are any other tips, that'd be great. So for me, um, one of the things that is a part of a, a standard part of my connection activities with the ERGs. So I there's I think total across all the boards, there's about 30 or so campers. And it's impossible for me to be, for me to meet with 30 people and hold those 30 people accountable. So having the board structure in place has been really important. And it's almost it's I mean, it's 
it's almost like a hierarchy. I don't want to call it a hierarchy because it's not, but it's, I meet with all of our ERG board chairs at a minimum on a monthly basis to hear updates from them on what's going, get an understanding of, you know, where their challenges or struggles are with the rest of their board members, identifying areas that I need to lean into to help support them to be really effective and making sure that they feel empowered to be the leaders of their boards. Essentially, this is their first step into becoming people leaders and then managing like a, a small team, ideally. So some of that responsibility does fall on them, but the things that fall outside of their 100% responsibility. Those are the things that fall on me and that's where I need to get involved. Um, so that's kind of, that's really the key motivator. I'd say the other piece of it is the developmental aspect of it. So um, I took some time last year and designed role response or job, job responsibilities for all of our ERGs. So they know what their knowledge, skills, and abilities are that they're developing within their roles as ERG leaders and how that can actually transition into their day-to-day -day roles. And then I spend some time with those who are interested ahead of our performance review process, sitting down and helping them understand like how to link skills like collaboration, communication, facilitation into their day-to-day -day roles or how to highlight their ERG work in their self-reflections during the performance review time. Um, and now like kind of like the next phase of that is getting their people leaders more involved. So their people leaders are actually getting more engaged within their ERG work. So it's it's been a phased approach. I guess I start with our ERG boards first and kind of work my way outside. Um, but yeah, it's I think the developmental opportunity opportunities that it's being an ERG lead has created has been really key in keeping everyone excited about it because I feel like everyone's kind of like hunger, has a hunger for L&D in some way, shape or form. But then there's also just a handful of folks who just are really truly care about the community. So I, I try to identify like, what are the opportunities that I can find for you to like lean more in the community to help enhance the like the overall longevity of like the company culture and the culture that you're creating for your community too. Um, there's a follow-up question to what you just said. So can you share those roles you've created, particularly the self-reflections? Yeah. So the self-reflections piece is a part of our performance review process that we do internally at Culture Ant. But the structure of our ERG boards is that we have um, our exec sponsors. Ideally, someone who's a vice president or at an exec level would be you know, the, the ideal part there. Um, then we have our ERG board chair, which would be an employee. The ask is that that employee is somewhere between the junior to senior level within Culture Ramp, because um, we don't want them to be too senior, too distracted, pulls in too many directions, or someone who won't fully take advantage of the learning and development opportunity that being a board lead presents. It's, presents. Um, and then next to them, we have an optional role for advisor, which is a volunteer role for those frontline managers who still want to be involved, but they're beyond, they're outside of the leveling, so they can't get compensated for it, but they're also able to provide some additional like kind of like groundwork and help with um, connecting some of the dots in place of an exec sponsor, whereas an exec sponsor is there to help lift and elevate and amplify concerns up or amplify the work that our ERGs are doing at the exec level. The advisors are really an extension to me, extension to me to help do some like internal like networking, groundworking um, when I can't always be available. And then underneath that group would have um, four ERG leads. So I let the ERGs decide like if they want their leads to have specific roles, they want someone to be focused on events, someone on communication, someone on education. Does it make more sense for someone to just have a regional focus role or does it make more sense to just divide and conquer the work and chop and screw it up however it makes the most sense. So I do let them build their teams in the way that they think works the best um, and we'll make sure that they're the most efficient and to identify like what are the things that they're excited about learning and developing. Okay. Um, going back to the previous question around building engagement um, globally, I think she's just talking about general engagement. Like how are you getting folks involved when it is a remote and global ERG program? I'm working on that right now, funny enough. Um, so we do tend to see a lot more engagement in North America um, for some of our groups and then a lot more engagement for some of our groups in Australia, where we're not seeing as much engagement is within our London and Berlin, EMEA region. And so what I ended up doing just a couple of months ago was launching an EMEA ERG council. So we have at least one ERG board member 
on every ERG that is based in or around EMEA. So I took that group of six people, kind of built out a separate little council specifically focused on the EMEA region. They're coming together monthly and meeting with um, our London office experience partner to identify the opportunities that they can work together and cross collaborate, identify things that will bring more people in the office. They have a really strong office culture that I really want to hone in on. And so they're focusing more on that region. So it's, it's almost like a tiger team. So I've got a little tiger team that's specifically focused, that's coming together. They're all ERG leads. They're able to work on things, which actually leans into like that intersectionality and the partnership of some of the events that they're hosting. And then working with their local, their VP that's on the ground, office experience partner to help start to bring more folks together and increase engagement. And so far they've hosted, I think two or three events and have seen really, really good turnouts. Yeah, we're good. You're getting a lot of love in the chat for that response. I think that's something that people struggle with is that ERG programs are typically um, US centric. And like when we start to expand globally, it's like, how do I actually do that? Um, a couple questions following that. Um, so within the ERGs, how are you approaching DEI trends and factors globally? DEI looks different in all areas of the world. So curious how you approach this. Mm -hmm. That's a softball question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I can't take all, all the credit for how we approach DEI. It's, it really is a team effort between me. I actually have a counterpart in terms of like how we split up supporting community. And I think that's probably where we start is based in our engagement surveys is with the different communities that are being impacted. So we look at our company-wide engagement survey and we see where the most marginalized groups are and what groups are the least engaged and what is the type of programming that we need to build to help support them. So for example, a big portion of her work and her strategy for this year is focused on disabled campers. So that would be disabled campers globally. Like basically what the surveys are telling us is that disabled campers globally are not having a great time. So how do we put together programming and experiences that are going to help influence and impact that? Um, my big strategy that I'm working on is for all of our Black employees. So we've built a lot of programming and structure around enhancing the Black employee experience this year. Um, and I will say that globally, Black employees are having very different experiences across each region. So it's a, it's a constant learning process for me, whereas our Black employees in North America want one thing, our Black employees in EMEA want something completely different. And you can't build one for all, you have to build something separate. So really similar like that tiger team that I needed to do in EMEA. There's something really similar that I'll need to do in EMEA for our Black employees because their experience is different. How they're showing up to work is different. Um, they aren't as, as distributed as they are, as we are in North America. So like it's, you do have to, what I have found is that really tweaking the approach for each region is key in finding as much success as you, as you possibly can. Okay. Um, okay. And, yeah, that was helpful. Um, and in those surveys, do you collect demographic information like sexuality, gender identity, religion, disability, et cetera? And then if so, how are you asking for this? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, we collect it through our HRIS system and it is optional. It's opt-in or opt-out. Um, what I tend to do at the about a week to two before a launch of a survey is that I'll send out a mass communications through our company newsletter. We've got a ERG kind of general channel where we have just about all of our employees in just saying like, hey, here's a reminder. Like if you haven't filled in your demographic data in, in our HRIS, please pop in and fill it. Why is this important? Because this is how we built the plans. This informs your ERG leaders to help build the communities that you want to see. Like this is, and I let folks know like why the data is important. All in all, I'd say there's a really a small percentage of folks who don't opt in. And most folks don't even realize like, oh my gosh, I haven't realized that I've done that. And I actually recorded a, uh, a quick little like video this last time that said like, here are the steps to actually go in and do it. And we saw an uptick in folks who had, who we were able to get more demographic data from. So it's like, and some of it was just enablement. Like folks didn't know like how to go into your HRIS because if honestly, if, if you're not on the people team, you're probably not poking around in bamboo HR that often. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's not a tool that you're leaning into unless you need to go in and like 
tweak something small. You got married, you had a baby or like you're changing your address. So like just even that little piece of enablement was a huge, huge win for us. Um, and then going back to the previous question around ERG roles, you mentioned that there is an advisor role. Um, there's a question around how are those advisors selected? Um, right now, anyone who raises their hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do. There is. So for all of the ERG roles at the beginning of the year, I do run a recruitment process um, for advisors, for the boards, for our exec sponsors. Um, but for the advisors, um, I would love to have one per region in, in a perfect world. But right now I have at least one per ERG. So really I am looking for anyone who is kind of like at that, like I said, first line manager level, they have a connection and a commitment to the community. I do do like a quick little like check-in interview with them to make, make sure that it's, you know, they can make the commitment. It's it's the right um, ultimate like alignment for them within the ERG, or maybe there's a better ERG that they can, can help participate and support. But really where we're at with the advisor role right now, since I just relaunched it at the beginning of this year is that I'm, I'm still exploring it. Um, and I'm taking anyone who raises their hands who says like, I've got time and capacity. I can volunteer some, some of my energy to help support the ERGs on like, um, on a ground level. And I haven't run into any issues since, because it really is like folks volunteering their time and, and, and commitment to, to supporting the boards to be more successful for the broader community communities. Um, last question I'm seeing in the chat. Do you have any advice or suggestions when creating ERGs from the ground up? Oh, start small. You don't have to have an ERG for everyone. Um, I think if you have some, some sort of survey data, then look at the groups that are the, the most impacted and most marginalized and can benefit from having a sense of community within the organization. Um, if you don't, run a quick little Google form just to check like what the level of interest is. And then whoever is the most interested, like those are the folks you can start to rally around and start to build community. Because at the end of the day, that's that's what it is. It's just like it's people looking for ways to find more connection outside of like their teams. And some people may be a team of one in some cases. So yeah, start small, one, maybe two groups. And then once that energy starts to build, same thing happened at Coltramp. Like when I first started, we just had our women's group. Um, and then more and more groups started seeing what our women's group was doing. More people wanted to start to started to get involved. And now we're up to to six ERGs over the course of four, four plus years or so. So um, it's really just about building the momentum and finding the folks who are your culture creators versus your culture consumers. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. That was our last question. Um, as a follow up, do you want to tell the people where they can find you and connect with you? Oh yes. Oh my gosh. I owe y'all some, um, some, I was supposed to drop some stuff in the chat. Wasn't I see told you toxic trade. <laughs> well, I was also going to say it, we will send out like a follow-up email with the okay. rest. So if you have those 22 survey questions, I believe is what you mentioned. Um, I'll include that in the follow-up email we send out to our attendees. Okay. Perfect. Um, <laughs> connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, that's probably the best and easiest way to find me. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I wish I was like super cool and on all the socials and everything, but I'm not, I'm a, I'm an elder millennial. <laughs> so, <guess> but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll drop my LinkedIn in the chat, but yeah, come, come find me, come hang out with me. Ask, ask more ERG questions. I, I can talk about this stuff all day. Great. Well, thank you so much. You've been great. Thank you to our audience for joining. Um, and like I said, you will receive the recording and some of the other resources either later today or tomorrow. So look out for that. Um, have a great rest of your Tuesday, everyone. And thank you again, Tanisha. Thank you. Bye, everybody.